Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. So my journey to becoming a published author was divinely guided. I mean, I've been talking about writing a book since last year and I have talked about it here publicly, but I never imagined that it would have found me the way it did. Mary Gooden is the one who published the book and somehow she found the Make Life Fun podcast and was the first how we interacted was she's a guest. So there's an episode where she and I had an interview and she shared her story with us here on the podcast. And later on, she shares with me that she has this download for this book called Divine Love. And it's a book about radical self-acceptance, radical self-love, which is so in alignment. That is my jam. That is what I'm all about. And so it felt like a full body head to toe. Yes. Like, this is what I've been searching. This is what I've been learning all about is how can we accept ourselves and love ourselves fully and divine love that title of that unconditional love. I didn't know what was going to come up when I was, when I said, yes, I had no idea what the story was going to be. I had no idea what I was going to share. In fact, I rewrote the story probably five or six times because I did not want to share the story that kept wanting to be shared. I wanted it to be light and fluffy. I wanted it to be easy. I wanted it to be all about the love. But what kept coming through is you cannot have love without the other side of the coin. Like you can't have love without the pain. To truly know what unconditional divine love is, is to go through the struggle, the pain, the heartbreak in order to reach the point where you can start to accept yourself. You can start to love yourself and you can start to know there's a love that is greater than who you are. And that just was the tip of the iceberg for the journey. But the story that wanted to be told just kept coming through as, as like, you have to tell your story. You have to tell your story of how you came to America. You have to tell your story of your abuse in childhood and how you healed. You have to tell your forgiveness story and how you came to accept yourself after being in a high school and a junior high and elementary school, being the only black girl. Like that story was the story that needed to be told. And I shied away from it for some reason. And it felt so set in stone. <laughs> like I'm, I'm putting this in stone and it's forever engraved in the world. This book is going to be published internationally. So everybody's going to be able to read it. So of course there's the mind drama that comes up. Who am I to tell my story? But it, I just had to keep coming back to the truth is that we cannot have love without knowing the opposite of what love is. I don't believe we can know what true pleasure is without pain because we wouldn't truly appreciate it as much because it's only having going, gone through something that is horrible that when we get to a place where it feels really good and really, it feels pleasurable, it feels loving. Do we really know what love is? Because imagine if we didn't have pain in the world, if we just, it was always happy, always joy. Would we even know the depth of joy, the depth of love, the depth of pleasure without knowing the pain. I definitely don't believe so. And especially since my recent loss of a child, like that was the deepest pain I've ever felt truly. If I have to put it into words, that was the deepest pain that I have felt. But from that deepest pain, oh my gosh, you best believe that I am trying my best to live a life that is filled with so much love for my child, for my husband, for myself, for the people that I serve. Like it is my mission. It is my mission to truly embody what it is to be love, what it is to be unconditional love. But I did not know the depth of love until I knew the depth of pain. 
Well, for years, if I'm going through my own experience of finding the depth of joy, I used to fake joy. I used to just think joy was just to put a smile on your face, fake it till you make it. And that's just joy. And to me, I've come to learn that is not joy. Joy is something that comes from within. It's a deeply embodied in your bones, in your DNA, like rooted feeling to me now. And that is only because I've done the work of peeling back all the layers of the pain that I felt and truly accepting those parts of myself that were wounded, whether it be in childhood, whether it be in my teenage years, but truly accepting all the parts of myself and knowing that each and every part of me did the best that they absolutely could in each journey that I've been able to find what it is to be in deep joy. So I don't believe that you can have a deep, deep joy without knowing its opposite, because you, how do you even know that it's a deep joy if you don't know the opposite like how do you know it's day if you don't have night is the thought that comes to my mind you know it's part of the life it's part of the journey that we have to have we have to go through pain in order to truly know and deeply know like a true knowing of what the opposite is what is joy what is what is love what is pleasure if you allow yourself to feel the pain, because a lot of the times I think we are so afraid of the pain that we don't want to feel it. So a lot of the inner child work, a lot of the wounded shadow work that I've done that I help my clients do is just in feeling their feelings. We're not taught to sit in our pain. We're taught to get rid of it as quickly as possible, bury it and not truly feel it. But the only way to get through the wound, the shadows, the darkness, the pain is to let yourself feel it at the depths that it needs to be felt so that you're able to release it and let it go so that you can welcome in the joy and the, and the blessings and the lessons that comes from everything that we go through. So for me, when I went through my most recent loss was the miscarriage, I had done enough work to know that I needed to grieve. I had done enough work to know that I needed to cry. I needed to journal. I needed to feel the pain. I needed to get support and help. So I allowed myself to break completely open. I allowed myself to be with that pain. And it was only by going through that, by allowing myself to break, that I was able to get to the other side and be so grateful. So grateful that I have my son. So grateful that I have my husband, my partner. So grateful that I'm alive. Just so grateful. On the other end of it was just so much gratitude for the life that I have now. And I call this child that is not with us here blessing because at the going through that level of pain, I realized what a blessing it was because now I will never take my life for granted. I know now what it is to have a life and how precious it is to have a child. Before when I had my first child, the thought never crossed my mind that there was a chance that he was not going to make it. Like I never had that level of fear. I didn't even know to have the thought. But now that I've gone through this, you best believe when my other child comes, who I am calling in faithfully, I am just going to be so thankful for the journey. And I'm going to be so appreciative for it because I know what it's like to not have had that experience. And so that's why I'm truly like really rooting in that we have to have the pain to have the joy. I don't believe you can get through this life without having your own version of pain. I don't believe you can go through this life without having your own version of trauma because we're all human. So none of us come here and have a perfectly laid out brick road, a yellow brick road that we get to follow and we don't fall every once in a while. So I say there's big T trauma and there's little T trauma, right? And so we each go through, we go through something. We have to go back and talk to those parts of us that went through those big or little traumas. I don't believe we we come on this earth with a way of getting through it without feeling pain and hurt. I, there's nobody that I know. There's nobody that I've talked to. Like there's some people that are in denial that thinks that everything is <laughs> peachy king and that everything was gravy and they didn't go through any pain and everything is fine. But I don't think there's a level of truth to that. If you were to really sit with it, something would come up, something would bubble up. But I do believe that the deeper the pain that you go through, the more that you're able to embody the joy if you're willing on the other side of it. And there's, I think it's a practice too. Like we have mindfulness practices and now they have what's called what laughter yoga. 
<laughs> which I tried once is very funny. And there's different mindfulness practices that you can do to start to feel a deeper feeling of joy and embodiment. Because a lot of us are disconnected even from our bodies. So we aren't in our bodies. Most of the time we're just going forward and we're living in like the next moment, the next moment. And so when we can practice being present, being here now in your full joy, like be with what is happening in your life now, that is how we get to start practicing being fully in our joy. If you're not constantly going through your life on autopilot, missing it all. When you come back to, I am here now and I'm with what is happening. I'm totally surrendered to the moment, to the present. I think that's how you start to practice embodying more of the joy, more of the pleasure of life. And I do believe that it's all here for us. If we're willing to do the work to really embody it, to really make it a part of who you are. So writing divine love, first of all, the beautiful souls that said yes to writing the book. That was just a beautiful experience to be in a space sharing this wisdom with these beautiful, beautiful humans that have gone through their own struggles to find what it is to truly embody and accept divine love for themselves and for the world. A lot of the women, and there's one man in the book, their mission is to make the world a better place through loving, through just love and their loving presence and who they are. And then after I wrote this book, I had to go through, it was like a vulnerability hangover. It was like, now the book is out in the world. I thought that the heavy lifting was all done. But honestly, I had to really integrate. I had to give myself a moment of pause. I had to give myself a moment of rest, of like really sitting in what the enormousness of doing something like this is. So the journey to me is still continuing. I still feel like I'm in a place where I'm just like, wow, this is a real thing that happened. Like I walked this walk, like I said, yes. And I showed up and I raised my hand and told my story. And now people get to hear it. And hopefully they get to learn what it is to forgive themselves, what it is to radically accept themselves. And the feedback we're receiving is people are finding these stories to be heartfelt and people are finding these stories to be activating for them and healing for them. And yeah, I've been receiving so many beautiful messages from the people that have opened the book and read, read even my chapter or other people's chapters of how they have really, really appreciated the vulnerability, appreciated the rawness and the truth. Cause that's what this book really is. I mean, divine love is, is a book of truth like people sharing their hearts and allowing themselves to really go deep with their journeys and their experience that they've went through. There's a story in there about shame. And I can't remember the name of the author oh, at the top of my head, where she is talking about how she noticed that she was feeling shame since early, early in her childhood. Since she was a kid, she would feel the feelings of shame in her body, in her stomach. And she would just go out into the world and try to protect herself from this shame. And she takes us through her journey of finding it and naming it and then learning to release that title of shame. So that touched me because I know now, especially as a mom, that feeling of guilt and shame that comes up. Like right now, Everett and I are going through stopping breastfeeding. Like that level of, am I doing the right thing at the right time? That level of shame that comes from, do I put this child in daycare? Do I keep doing what I'm doing? Do I keep doing the work that I'm doing in the world with this kid now that I have? And so talking about shame is something that is new for me. That's a new level that I've got to work through, I think, because I never looked at it as shame. I looked at it as like, it's a guilt thing. Like we feel guilty as moms to for X, Y, Z. But I think it's rooted even deeper than that because in our society, we're told how mothers should be, right? We're told how it goes. The man's the provider and the woman stays at home barefoot in the kitchen. And so we're programmed at such an early age to feel this level of shame. And her just telling her story with it just starts to put you in her shoes, right? And then it starts to open up a different window for you to look through your own life. And so that story really has touched me. And now the work I'm doing is I'm looking at where in my life have I felt shame? Where in my life can I let that go? Where Because honestly, I don't believe even shame is a emotion. I believe it's just a program. I don't believe it's ours. So it's something that we need to practice letting go of. And because she was willing to share her story, now I have something to work on. I have something that 
I want to go deeper and heal within myself. After going through this journey of divine love, I had so many epiphanies, so many awakenings. It was such a transformative experience for me of sharing my journey to finding divine love that it came clear that I want to help other people have this transformation. I want to help other women to tell their story. And that's what I do in this podcast, but now I want to do it in an even deeper way. So I want to turn the podcast. It's not even a want anymore. It's happening. It's already done (laughs) that this podcast is going to be a book with some of the beautiful souls that have been on the show, sharing their story and sharing it in a deeper way where it can be read in a book. And so the Make Life Fun book is going to be a book where women are sharing their stories of finding themselves in motherhood and finding joy in motherhood, finding pleasure and ease in motherhood. Because I think that's not a story we hear very often of mom life being fun, mom life being easy. And there are women that has made it their mission to create a different way of parenting, a different way of mom life. And so I am so excited for this journey because it's only going to crack me open even more to be able to hold such space for people and women to tell their stories this way. And so the Make Life Fun book is definitely in the works. It's definitely in the visioning stage. It's definitely in the calling in stage of the creation process. But in my mind, in my heart, it's already done because I see the impact in the lives that can be changed from these stories of women's mindset and motherhood and a way they decide to go about it is everything. When a mom decides to drop the mom guilt, when a mom decides to drop the shame, when a mom decides to parent from a place of love instead of fear, I mean, that is everything. When a mom goes in and says, you know what, I'm going to go look at my inner child and I'm going to hold that part of myself and love that part of myself to life, back to life, you can only do that for your kid as well. Because I do believe that we can only love as much as we're allowing ourselves to love ourselves. So if we can give ourselves grace and love and compassion and love ourselves unconditionally, we can do that for our child. Like I am not one to shame moms and I'm not one to look at parenting and judge other mothers. But I definitely think when we do our work on ourselves, It is the fuel for our child to thrive and be the best versions of themselves. We are then showing up as the best versions of ourselves. We are conscious and aware and awake. And I think that's just the biggest gift that moms can give to themselves and their child. And one compliment my husband always gives me all the time is how patient I am with Everett and how he is about to turn two and how I've decided to label the twos as terrific twos. Like, because in my mind, I'm not going to look at it as terrible twos because he's two years old and he's learning new things and he's unfolding. He has all these emotions. I'm looking at it as these are going to be his terrific twos. And it is my job to help him move through it. I still believe that Everett is my teacher. So every day I'm learning something new about how to love him better and how to appreciate him more and how to help him feel those emotions and help him ask for what he wants. And so I do believe the work that moms do for themselves is just life-giving for the whole family, really, not just for parenting. Becoming a mom after being in a relationship with my husband. So we're going on 13 years now and Everett's two, about to be two. It's a completely new relationship. Like he's a dad now, I'm a mom. And we're constantly helping each other. We're constantly growing together as a family. And so if he continues to do his work and I continue to do my work, and then when we come to parenting, it just feels so much easier. And so I do believe that these stories are just going to help in so many ways to inspire a different way of being in motherhood, because there's more than one way to do motherhood and we get to make it what works for us. Let me reintroduce myself and get honest with you. In 2020, I was motivated to change things up. The pandemic accelerated things that I was forced to close Josie Joe hair design after over a decade in business. I started my first podcast, Backroads, because I loved to travel and I loved 
the travel industry and also personal development that happens when you travel, especially as a solo traveler. I got burned out after winging it with my podcast for 21 episodes and doing everything on my own. And I love to teach and podcasting was still tugging at my heart. And I got inspired by motherhood and started the current podcast, Make Life Fun, that you're listening to today. And this show, Make Life Fun, was inspired by my journey of motherhood where I just did not feel like I was going to be the mother that I wanted to be. I thought it was just going to be a hard job. I thought it was just going to be 21 years, 18 years of this like hard knock life because I've heard from so many mamas and so many moms how hard motherhood is. And so when I came up with Make Life Fun, it was like, can we make it fun? (laughs) Can we make it easy? Is there a better way to do this? And that gave birth to this show today that we are over 70 episodes now. So over two years in my business, I still felt like I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like I loved what I was doing and I loved how I was showing up and the mindset piece was on point, but it still was not working. I had done a lot of deep diving and personal development work and still nothing, right? And so I have to find a different way. I had to find a different tool. I had to find a whole new tool box of tools. <laughs> And I realized that I wasn't in alignment with myself. I wasn't connected with my soul purpose. I wasn't, it wasn't a deep soul, full body alignment. I was moving from my head space. I was moving from a place of this is what I should do instead of a heart led, soul led, this is what I'm doing because it feels so good. This is what I'm talking about because it lights me up. This is it. And when you move in that alignment and you're moving in that way of being pulled by your vision, it's a whole new way of being. And on the outside, I still looked shiny and happy. It looked like everything was working. It looked like I had everything together. And on the inside, I was completely having a totally different experience. I discovered that I had shut down parts of myself because I didn't feel safe. I've been called too much so many times in my childhood that I felt my power of that too much, I had to hide it. So that led me to feel trapped as a result of hiding that part of myself that is too much for some people who aren't my people. The too much part of me is who I am. The too much part of me is it's the part of me that makes me come alive. The part of me that gets curious. The part of me that wants to push the envelope. The part of me that wants to be $10 million Josie. That is my too much. And I had to go back and embrace that part and reclaim that part of me fully. And that was a mission (laughs) and a mountain that needed to be moved. And so it was a deep diving journey for the last eight months that I've been on. And the results so far that I've experienced from this deep dive is that my husband's gotten a raise and he's 2x his income. I'm a published author and international bestseller. I'm showing up in my business like a boss, like a CEO, like a person who is completely in charge. (laughs) and completely owning the space that I'm in. I'm owning what I do. I'm owning how I do it. I am owning my authentic self, my authentic voice. I'm connecting to my whole integrated self. I've welcomed all of me here. I am so in love with all of me (laughs) and all of that I have found. All the parts of Josie that were criticized and beat down, the parts that were called too much, too sensitive, those parts of me are here now and held, loved cherished. And I am more than anything following my soul calling. I am saying what I want to say. I am doing what I want to do. And I am lighting up day after day serving in this way. And what I want for you is to experience results like this. I want you to feel it up. I want you to feel so in love with yourself, so in love with your life. I want you to be walking your soul purpose. And I have openings that I've opened up for my powerful coaching experience. And I would love to invite you in to a powerful container where I am holding powerful space for you to experience the transformation for yourself, to experience what it is like to be moving in alignment, moving connected. And together, we have a 60-minute session, this free 60-minute session with me. You're going to get clear on your soul aligned vision. We're going to dive deep and we're going to discover what is stopping you and blocking you. What is in your way? What is it that you can't see right now? And we're going to create a plan so you can take the next best step that has you taking powerful, aligned, soul-aligned action that will have you creating your vision with greater ease because there's a difference from forcing and pushing versus alignment and flow. And I want to help you get into alignment and flow. And whatever it is that you're creating right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whether it is you're feeling like you need more self-love or you're feeling like you need help with your parenting, your motherhood, motherhood is hard. 
Whatever it is in your life right now that you feel is a challenge, I can hold space for you to look at it differently and create a plan that helps you break through that. So you know where to find me, backrosecoaching.com. Go to the contact page and you can go ahead and book yourself a free 60-minute session where I promise you it is going to be all about you. This is for you to share and for me to listen and hold the space that you need to find the answer that is already deep within you. So I invite you in. I, t- I will talk to you soon and thank you for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for all the times that you have reached out to me and told me what you're liking about the show and giving me your feedback because they matter to me. I created this for you, mama, for you to gain wisdom, encouragement, and for you to feel like you're not alone. So have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.